In this program, I want to look specifically how the electrons are arranged in the hydrogen atom. In order to do that, we need to understand a little bit about spectra. Here I have an example of what's called a continuous spectrum. White light produced from a light bulb goes through our glass prism and splits into its component colors, starting at this end with violet and moving up to this end, which is red. I want to look a little bit more closely at how these colors differ from each other. Scientists view light as a wave. Red light, perhaps resembling this wave, and violet light, perhaps resembling this wave. The property that's different about these two waves is what we call the wavelength, the distance between the two crests of our wave. We can see here that red light has a very large wavelength compared to our violet light, which has a very small distance between its crest, or a small wavelength. These waves also differ in their energy content. Red light is considered a low energy wave, and our violet light a high energy wave. Now this information is available in our IB data booklet. I take this out of here. It's called the electromagnetic spectrum. We can see here the violet light down at this end and its wavelength, um, 400 nanometers, nano standing for 10 to the minus 9. At this end, our red light, 700 nanometers. We can also see the difference in their energies up here. Here we have high energy at this end with our violet light, our x-rays and our gamma rays and our radio waves, microwaves, red light down at the low energy content. These waves also differ in another property called its frequency. And this comes from an equation related to this unit, the universal wave equation. This symbol here represents the frequency of our wave. C is the speed of light. which is always 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. It's a constant value. I'm going to rearrange this equation a little bit. C over my wavelength is equal to my frequency. Here I can see that there's an inverse relationship that exists between the two. If, for instance, my wavelength becomes a smaller number, my frequency would become a bigger number. That's what happens as we move from red light down towards our violet light. The shorter wavelength of violet light indicates that this would have a high frequency, and this would have a low frequency. So you need to be able to compare the colors of light in terms of their energies, their frequencies, and their wavelengths. Let's look at some other spectra that can be generated. In this situation, I introduce a gas in between our white light and our prism. So our white light travels through this low energy gas, and what we see is a spectrum with bands of colors removed from it, specific bands of colors. This is called an absorption spectrum because we've essentially absorbed some of the colors of light. In this next spectrum, we replace our white light bulb with a high energy gas. So we have a gas at a very high temperature or electricity passing through a gas. It glows and gives off its own unique color, which when broken down into its components, gives us several bars or stripes of color, not a continuous spectrum at all. This is referred to as an emission or a line spectrum. One of the things you should note about these spectra is they complement each other. What I mean by that is a band that is missing in my absorption spectrum is exactly the same as the band that's emitted in the emission spectrum, provided back here I have the same gas. What Niels Bohr looked at was hydrogen gas. And he came up with an explanation for this behavior, this complementary behavior of our two spectra. Let's look at how he did that. 
I'm going to focus on, first of all, the line or emission spectrum. The first statement in Bohr's model of the atom is that the electrons can only exist at discrete energy levels. That means that the electron could be here, could be at this energy level, but it could never exist at some position that lies between energy levels. We would never find it there. It would either be here or here. He also believed that the further out one moved from the atom, that these orbits or regions where the electrons could be essentially became closer together. Now, what made him think that? Well, we know that as we move from red light over to our purple light, we know that the, our energy content is going up. And he also notes here the colors are getting closer together. What he viewed is as you moved away from the nucleus of our atom, the energy was also going up. And the fact that these colors converged, he explained by the fact that these orbits converge, or these energy levels converge. Now, let's look at what produced our colors. He believed that the electron moved from this position out at the third energy level to the second energy level. So that transition, it disappeared and reappeared here, and that that particular drop from there to there was the culprit that produced that color of light. This color, which has more energy, was produced by a slightly bigger transition, an electron out in the fourth energy level falling down to the second. And similarly, the next color, the violet light there, was produced from a transition from this, the fifth orbit, down to the second. All transitions down to the second essentially produced visible light. Bohr also hypothesized that electrons could transition from, let's say, the second orbit down to the first orbit, but those drops would be too much energy for our eye to detect. They would fall out here in the ultraviolet region of the spectrum. And there also would be tiny transitions, perhaps between the fifth and the fourth orbit, and those would correspond to transitions out here in the infrared region. So those transitions to closer orbits produced these bars of colors. He therefore also hypothesized that when electrons transition in the other direction, so when they move from closer orbits to more distant ones, they essentially absorb the colors, producing our absorption spectrum. In our next program, we'll look at the arrangement of electrons in more complicated atoms than just hydrogen. But before we leave this, consider the following. Thanks for watching.